All right. All right. We here. We are here. Oh, my gosh. Right. You forgot that quick. No, you were supposed to say it. Oh, okay, okay. Silly rabbit. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. I'm Ayana. And this is Baca. And this is the Abaca's Be Extraordinary Podcast. We're back. We're back. Yeah. And let me color. Yes. <laughs> One year later. Like, One year later. We recorded our first podcast a, a little a little under a year ago. It was like right before we had our baby. Yeah. And we were a all, few days before we had we our baby. We were like so gung ho, like, look, we're about to start this podcast. We're about to do it. We're gonna do, do it. it. Like do it. do it. Yeah. A whole lot has happened. Yeah, a whole lot. Um a whole baby, like a whole human being is mm-hmm. born. Um and yeah. So uh, we're just going to jump straight in. We're not even going to, you know, we're not going to play around with it. No we, more games. We back. You know, no more games. I remember when we recorded the first podcast, there were so many people who were like, okay, when y'all going to do another one? It was like, we coming, we, we coming. We got you. We got, we you. got you. And it was just a lot. It was just a lot. Yeah. And we're ready to talk about it now. No more holding back. We're ready to spread our wings and fly. Tweet, 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 tweet. So, yeah. So, our first topic is actually, it's something that, um, it's funny that a lot of people are dealing with, um, and it is actually based on gender roles in marriage. Um, and it's, it's funny because with us, uh, we are so not the ordinary, we're extra ordinary (laughs) you see what i did did you see what i did yes so um everything about us is really uh custom made and we really believe that that's how marriages are supposed to be so um this is a topic that actually comes up a whole lot and especially in our household we definitely want to share our perspective on it and just kind of talk about it a little bit so because we also did even um we did a poll Mm -hmm. a poll and and as far as on gender roles in marriage and also in parenthood and well we did the one on parenthood <sighs> so parenthood will be a um that'll be another podcast that won't be in this one because i felt like we needed to focus strictly on marriage because yeah. it's two loaded topics yeah so um i wanted to split it up <laughs> yeah so uh it's necessary because even this podcast i feel like part this gender roles in marriage it would be crazy if it's two parts We'll Look, see. man. Hey, we'll, we'll see. What we're trying to do, we wrote down like not any notes because we're gonna just let it come straight from the heart <laughs> and <laughs> let <laughs> it be, you know, <laughs> <laughs> let it be what it's gonna be. But we did write down like a couple, like all right, here are some questions, yeah. here are some points, so we can kind of stay a little bit on topic mm-hmm. and we won't just go off on too many tangents. And yeah, but it's, and it's some good juiciness. Sequence and co All right, so let's jump right into it. So the first, um, I guess topic under Ooh, Lord, gender nervous. roles in marriage is money and um who's the breadwinner mm. like who should money. be the who should be the breadwinner money. <laughs> money money <laughs> like who should be the breadwinner um also like oh my gosh who should pay the bills? Yeah. Should the bills be split 50-50? I take care of my stuff. You take care yeah. of your stuff. If you don't, you owe me. You owe me. All like, of that, man. We've heard a lot. So let's jump into it. Um, breadwinner. Like, what do you think about that? All right. So for me, I feel like the breadwinner um, should definitely be um, <laughs> whoever's bringing in the bread. Um, <laughs> at the end of the day, I really see it as a team effort. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like um, that it should be designated or, well, because I'm the man, I need to be the breadwinner. Or let's say with her, she's a woman and she, you know, it's, oh, we independent, I, N, D, you know, all of that. Um, I, I don't feel like it should be like a sign, an assigned role. Like you're the breadwinner. Um, because the funny thing is with us, uh, when we first got married, I was still working at Chick-fil-A. And the crazy part is, with me working there, I would work doubles and doubles. My doubles had doubles, meaning that I would work from, like, 6 in the morning sometimes to, like, 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night. Like, literally all day. And even though I was working so hard, I'm like, yeah. Ooh, I got, like, 122 hours this week. That's this week. <laughs> and That's I'm, like, lot. tired, sweating. 
uh, smelling like chicken, can't really lose weight because I'm eating what I'm sweating off. And uh, and then I turn around and I'm like, all right, here's two weeks. Let me get my check. Ooh, I got a whole bunch of hours. I look at it. And I'm like, man, this is good. And I'm like, what was your check? What'd you get? Because, you know, she with her being a hairstylist. And this girl done worked dang on three, uh, to, four days. three to four days a week. And this is when my prices were like low. It's like almost 10 years ago. Yes. And so prices were not like how it is now. So even lower prices, but I still made more than him in four days than he did in two weeks. Look, I I immediately, this was early on. I For a second, I was mad because I was like, look, I'm going to work hard because I got to make sure that we good. Like, because truthfully, I did have the the assumption or I did fall in line with the thought of, okay, I'm the husband. I need to bring home the bacon mm -hmm. so she can cook the bacon, even though it's turkey bacon. And I quickly found out that it's not about that because even though I work, I was busting my butt. Yeah. And she still was yeah. bringing in more. <laughs> Talking about some, yeah. I didn't have any clients today. I was chilling. It was light. What would you take? Well, I brought home like eight hundred dollars. What? Mm -hmm. That was my whole check for two weeks, and that was one week. Look, man, I learned real quick. Hey, uh, whoever bring the bread, let's let's just bring the bread. Yeah, it was <laughs> like for us, it was never. Um, I don't know. I was never. I never really looked at it as, oh, I'm. Su you're supposed to make more money than me, mm -hmm. and all of that because we. Um, one thing that, man, I always tell this to girls because a lot of women nowadays have this thing of, oh, they want to meet a man who has it all together. He needs to be a millionaire, or he needs to have, be making a whole bunch of money, and da 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 da. And he's gonna take care of me, and all this. He got me. He got me. All of that. And I'm like. What if you meet like the bus driver or something? The mm. bus driver who has ambition, who has goals, who's mm. like, listen, I might be driving this bus right now, but I'm not staying. And then first of all, Marta, we live in Atlanta. Marta bus drivers do not get paid. Like I had a client who was a Marta bus driver. They get paid pretty decent. But we sitting there thinking because they drive public transportation that they ain't got no money. Yep. But um, like that bus driver could have a vision of owning his own business or, you know, going up in the ranks in MARTA or whoever. Like, like let's say with you with Chick-fil-A. When I met Sylvester, he was um, on grill. By the time he left Chick-fil-A, he was the uh, training supervisor for that location. Mm -hmm. So they're like, I, I looked at Chick-fil-A as there's growth in Chick-fil-A. There are people that we, that he worked with that are still at Chick-fil-A, but they're at Chick-fil-A corporate making nice amount of money or they're an operations manager yep. for Chick-fil-A. So I was just like, you know, what, what, we just going to see how we grow. It wasn't no thing of, Oh, you need to be the breadwinner and such and such and such and such. Like it's a team. Like yeah. that. That's that's us. It's a team. It's definitely so. a team. And it's funny that um, it, well, it'll be another another topic. But like, even though I was at Chick Fil A and she was encouraging me, like, look, you, but you, you not even. It's not even about that. Like you got goals. You got vision. Like you, you doing. The, like she's like just you know. And I'm like, oh snap, I got goals and vision. Like. But I was, like, embarrassed and, like, thinking that people was looking at me funny because I was at Chick-fil-A. There were some people. There were some. There were some people that made little comments or was like, oh, he works at Chick-fil-A. And I was like, yes, he does. <laughs> yes. Yep. And yes. they sure wanted that Chick-fil-A sandwich with no pickles. <laughs> Get so, out of the face. You know, but, I mean, look at us now. Like, we have a business. We have yeah. several streams of income that we're working on. We're growing, all of that. So, like... Just because you meet someone or somebody may be in a certain space in this time doesn't mean that they're gonna stay there. So, Not at all. so the breadwinner is. is ooh, ooh, I got I got This quote just can't. Your your location is not your final destination. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> bars, guys. <laughs> oh my god. Bars. Gosh. But um, yeah, I just feel like you know because at one point in our relationship in our marriage, um, you know, Sylvester left. He left when he left Chick Fil A. Um, he full time. He went into entrepreneurship, hit at doing his thing, and there was no checks coming in for a minute on his <sighs> end. Lord, but on my end, Lord. I was the one. I was the breadwinner. Like I was taking care of everything. Lord, and you know that was hard. It was. That was. Hard. It was. 
It was but, more um, hard on my pride and my ego than anything. I know it was hard, period, because you sweating and going to work, and I'm sitting there at home, like, making music, but it was hard. But, that's that's going to be another podcast, Yeah, the too. funny thing, even with that certain season in our life, though, because of the different things that was going on, I feel like, because we... We had a plan in that season. Yeah. We did have a plan in that season, but unfortunately, you know, it was hooked up to different things that des- didn't necessarily work out. So, you know, it wasn't intentional for you to not be bringing in anything. Like, yeah. there was a plan to bring in money, but it that, just, it just, it, that just was, I, that was, it was too much. It was a lot of confusion going on. And honestly, if, like, if you had an opportunity to go back and fix a moment, like, I I don't regret anything, but if we had an opportunity to go and fix that moment, it would have been certain decisions that I know both of us would have, would have been like, nah. I mean, I know I would have approached certain things differently. <laughs> yeah. And more so, um, and of course, it's hindsight now um, because you can see it. Of course, like, you see the whole picture now, but I would have approached things differently because um, it was a lot of, a lot of potential there. Um, potential to be something... Um, really Mm life-changing but i know that i know that there was some overthinking and different things like that which kind of kept it from being what it was supposed to be so you know praise god no regrets at all no Um, not not at all because i'm one thing we learned we learned a lot in that season and then it even prepared us for this season yeah where you know a year ago a, a year ago Shoot. A few days ago. Uh, well, even two years ago, because first I left, then you left. Yeah, first he he, <laughs> he left again. Yeah. But he left this time, and we had a plan. Yeah, we had a plan. We definitely had a plan. Definitely there, had there a plan. There was money coming in and all of that, and then a year after that, I left. And retired. And retired yep. because I was pregnant, and, you know, I decided, um, well, I decided a long time ago that I didn't want to, you know, when I started having children, I wasn't going to be behind a chair. Yeah. And then when we got married, excuse me, y'all. <laughs> when we got married, we talked about it and we made that decision as well. Yeah. You know, we agreed on that decision and we decided to take that faith step and it happened. And it really prepared us mentally because I went from being, I guess, the breadwinner in some aspects to not being the breadwinner. And it was an adjustment, but it was like, listen... My husband taking care of me. <laughs> so, <laughs> and but. Um, I do want to even say this: um, the little sidebar for anybody, if God is telling you to to leave your job, uh, know that it's God. Don't be doing it out out of your emotion. Um, trying to do something and trying to say it's God. Like, ooh, you know, what? I'm just tired of this job. I'm about to quit. All right. You're going to be out there in them streets. Let it be God. Let it be God. Because, <laughs> for, I mean, honestly, for us, it was definitely God. Yeah. Because both times. Both All times. Three times. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, um, even with myself, even though I stepped back from, you know, retired from being in the salon, an opportunity came about maybe like two months after. Literally. Like after I had thing, Haven. It even- like, oh, it, it was, was kind of right before you left. Yeah, it was present. An opportunity was presented for me to be able to do some stuff at home with a company. Um, it was probably right before I retired, and I expressed to them that I was retiring, and you know, just let them know the situation and how it was going, and I would have more time. And then I think about two months after having Haven, almost two months after having Haven. Uh, the opportunity presented itself again and that's how I was able to you know bring in a source of income on my end which really helped because we had our moments and our times and listen having a child (laughs) and you know being an entrepreneur it ain't easy but we did it so let it be God (laughs) (laughs) yeah but um oh okay so Next thing in this money aspect. Money. So. Money. There are some relationships that talk about or they're, they're, how they pay bills and handle finances mm-hmm. is everything is split down the middle. Or there are some people who um, the man pays the rent and all the major bills and the wife takes care of the smaller bills. Um, and then there are also certain situations that 
it is 50 50 and if that person like this particular one i saw <laughs> online if it's 50 50 but the wife at the moment wasn't able like she had a baby so she went on maternity leave so she wasn't bringing in what she was usually bringing in mm -hmm. so the husband um because it was usually 50 50 she wasn't able to cover everything so he was covering mo most of her expenses and then when she went back to work he started to garnish her wages because she owed him boy stop yeah boy stop like that honestly uh because of course i know the situation she's talking about and um well i'll answer the first part as far as like the 50 50 i i really feel like when it comes to the i guess the 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 money in the house and how things are handled I really think that it's a it's a conversation of okay this is what works best for our house. Yep. Um, there is no one way of okay. Well, this is the universal law of the land that every single household they they run with. Mm -hmm. Like I don't feel like that's that doesn't make any that's stupid. Like that I doesn't feel, even make any sense. <laughs> I feel like uh, some of these relationships honestly is is turning into business relationships. Yeah. Like the way some people are breaking it down and all of that because I'm like okay if. If you have a 50-50 decision when it comes to paying bills and taking care of the finances, I get it. But is there any type of flexibility in that? Because, there should be. But it comes off like some people don't, there's no flexibility. Like, like what if one person loses their job and you got to take care of 100%, you know? I feel like the reason why is because they're more protecting their investment. Like they're like, oh well, this is my this is my portion, so you better pay me back from my portion because I'm putting in this work, I'm putting in this effort, and you better come to the table. I bring my fifty percent, you bring your fifty, we match, and now we a hundred. It don't work like that. So what if like I guess my question would be to like some of these marriages that have that arrangement, like what if something happens to the person and they're never able to bring their 50%? That's that's the thing. It, in a business, you say, okay, well, you're not living up to your part of the, the our contractual agreement. So then you're like, well, I guess you need to be voted out of the business or I need to buy your side of the business and, and I'm own like, a full share. Because I'm like, what if the person gets sick or something? Exactly. Like, oh, but my thing is, what if you get sick? Yeah. Like the like even the person she was taught she mentioned you know how the the husband uh the the wife had a baby yeah now again let me give this disclaimer oh and then there, there were hospital bills there were hospital bills and she had to pay <sighs> him Lord back Jesus. for the hospital bills too look here's my disclaimer i don't get involved in nobody's marriage their marriage is their marriage and this was a public <laughs> yeah, thing this like this public. this was a public post on yeah. it was an instagram post i think it was um Demetria Lucas, if you guys follow her, she I think she posted it. Yeah. And I was like, what? It, it was out of control. So yeah. I just wanted to give that disclaimer. Like, your marriage is your marriage. And what works for you may work for you. But uh, just speaking on the, the question, <laughs> that's stupid. <laughs> because, like, honestly, um, I've always viewed women as, you know, um, just an amazing life force, to be honest. Um, like, and in me viewing you like that, I feel like when it comes to, like, um, I don't even want to just say, oh, you know, you bring, you're able to have kids because that's not what you're limited to. Like, that's not your ceiling. So, but on this situation, the fact that his wife had his big head child mm -hmm. and he said, oh, you know what? While you was on maternity leave from our marriage business, because you had our kids, you were missing out on some of your days and your your sick pay or whatever, your insurance pay that, that was whatever it is, it ran out. So you owe me for back rent. You owe me for back car note. You owe me for back whatever the case may be, hospital bills, all that. Man, that's stressful. Mm -hmm. Like, nobody want to deal with that. I know I don't because, again, my thing is... I like when she told me of the situation, it actually kind of it kind of pissed me off, to be honest. And it was because I was like, all right, at the end of the day, if you're sitting there as a man to sit there and say, you know what? Yeah, you owe me financially for something. But this person did all the work They did. They did all the labor. They brought a child in and they're also caring for the child. But you said, well, 
I know you care for the child, but you don't forget, I'm going to garnish your pay, your paycheck. And I'm like, the audacity, because if something happened to you, God forbid, you, you lose your job, you break your toe. And you're like, oh, dang, I can't work. And then your job is like, oh, well, because you're supposed to be, um, you're supposed to be moving a certain way. Now you can't move, so we're going to fire you. Now, can she can she come back and say, you know what? Now that you don't have a job, you owe me. I need to garnish your paychecks. Or are you going to be like, no, oh, man, see, you got to understand because I broke my toe and my job, I'm a running man. Really? I think it's a, I, honestly, I feel like it's a manner, a matter, excuse me, of control. Yeah. And I don't think some men really think about if the shoe was on the other foot. Nope. Not I don't at think all. they, it's like this, it's this sense of entitlement. Like, well, this is what we're doing because I'm the man and such and such, such and such. And they automatically expect the woman to like take care of them and pick up for them. And I'm like, Listen, man, these. that same woman, whatever that situation, that same woman could sit there just one day and decide to leave. And I'm like, do y'all have a prenup or anything like that? Because she could sit there. You sitting there talking about she owe you money and all of that. She could sit there and just be like, all right, I'm going to leave. I'm taking our child and I am going to make sure and get all the money, you know, especially yep. if he has a good job and alimony and some, you know, yep. so because we had a certain lifestyle. Yeah. But because if they're doing everything 50 50, I'm sure they have a prenup because they're like, oh, we're going to split everything down the middle. That is not love at all. That is literally a business arrangement. Yeah. And my thing is, at the end of the day, like, what's going to happen when you get mad? Are you going to be like, you know what? I don't like you no more. And I, you know what? It works. It's like, okay, it works for some people. That's, mm -hmm. you know, it'll work. Like, the 50-50 thing, I'm, it works for some people. I've seen, I've heard some people talk about it, and it's cool, and they have, like, no issues with it, and, yeah. like, it's no, you know, because they, it's like 50-50, but they have that understanding that, hey, if I need to step in some more, or he needs to step in some more, we good. Yeah. But when it's like this 50-50 contractual like, agreement, like, hard line, it's so... No breaking? Yeah, and I nah. just, I had to say Say that because I don't want nobody in the comments like, but I do 50-50 with my husband nah, look, and it works out for us. Look, Listen. Like I said, I'm what talking works about, in your house yeah, works in your house. <laughs> I'm talking about them people that don't play like where's my money? You gotta be able to bend a little bit because not all the time. I mean, you can sit there because my thing is you can sit there and have a plan of this is how it's supposed to go, but something's always gonna interrupt your plan. I mean, we have a child. That little girl interrupts everything. Like, we can sit there. Ayana's like, oh, I'm about to record a video. Haven's like, no, you're not. Mm -hmm. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> and she just goes in. And you have to say, well, dang, I guess I got to wait. Your plan is interrupted. I mean, things happen. It's called life. Mm -hmm. So, mm. All right. You want to jump to the next one? Yeah. Okay. So, the next topic at hand is. Who wears? Leadership. Who wears the pants? Yeah. Who? who wears the pants? Who do who who do you feel? Who who wears the who wears the pants in our house? It's funny when you wrote that down, I was kind of like, "Where's the pants?" Like, I don't like that phrase. I mean, you know, that's what they say in the streets. Who wears the pants? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know how to answer. No. Okay. Well, my answer of who wears the pants, uh, truthfully, I believe that we both have a leg in. Um, okay. That's what I'm thinking in my head, you <laughs> I, know. I really feel, I don't feel like it's a, um, like the buck start, stops here. Like it's a thing of, um, well, I'm the man, so it all stops with me. Or she's the woman. Because the funny thing is with us, um, <laughs> If you don't know us and you just saw us in the street, I'm always smiling. Always. Ayana might not be smiling. And sometimes people have this thought that I'm the pushover. I mean, especially when we first got married, they were like, Ayana just, she run over you. Because a lot of people knew me separate from him. Yeah. And like, I can be very bossy. So they were like, oh, she's bossy and she's such and such. So you know what? She's like ruling or she you know i bet you she she running all over him and i'm like 
you like I tell people now, especially I'm like, you don't know my husband. He might smile in your face, but he ain't no pushover. So, <laughs> nah, not at all. Um, because it's about respecting each other. Yep. And as far as like wearing the pants, like I don't, I've never liked that that question or that statement when you know hearing it growing up. Like, oh, she wear the pants or whatever, because it insinuates domination. And I don't view marriage as a who's dominating the other person. I view marriage as uh, we got to work together because we got to figure this thing out called life. Exactly. Um, there's there's nobody. I mean, for me to dominate or or to say that, OK, well, oh, well, I'm the head of the house. Yeah, I know I'm the head, but she's the neck. The head can't move without the neck. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, like I can say that I'm I'm running something, but I got to run with my legs. Exactly. <laughs> like so we both share that responsibility and this is a mutual partnership. This is a, a joint effort. It's not something that you just say, oh, well, because they said that a man's supposed to be like this, I got to do this and you supposed to be like that. Now go make me a sandwich. Hmm. So mm -mm. that's the way I feel about that. I feel you. <laughs> I, I mean, that's that's my thing too. Like, you know, like I feel like the the word that everybody hates to use is submission, and I feel like submission is. Of course, I submit to my husband and his leadership, and you know, um, different things. And but I feel like submission is on both ends. You know, like people look at submission as such a bad word. But submission is not a bad word. Like, you know, it, there's been such a negative, negative shadow that's been put on submission. But I feel like submission, like submission is like, okay, if you submit to your leader, your leader or leadership at your job, or you submit to your leader, uh, if you're in a sorority or fraternity, like there's always, submission is, all. it's, it's, it's you submitting onto a leader or you like you, there's always going to be a leader and there's always going to be people following that leader. True. Half of y'all are not y'all, but <laughs> half it, like it got a bunch of people on, on social media now following people yeah. like literally submitting onto a celebrity or somebody, you know, and not even realizing it. And but you scared of the word submission, you know? Yeah. So. Which actually leads to the second part of that question, which is, well, who's leading the house? Honestly, in our house, I feel like you lead. Oh. I mean, like. I'm not disagreeing yeah. or nothing. I was just, you no, know. No, no, I know. But it's like, because I, there's certain things and certain decisions. I do look to you like, okay, what we doing? Okay. Yeah. How we doing this? Okay. You know, like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking for your leadership in this area. You know, so you see that. Yeah, you see. Do you see that? <laughs> it's nothing wrong with that. Like, some no, people I might know. look at it like something's wrong. But I'm like, if there's certain things that's going on, like I'm looking like that ain't what we know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, um, so this is such and such, such and such. OK. Yeah. <laughs> and see, and that's that's the you know how a second ago when I said, you know, like I might be the head, but she's still the neck. Um, I don't. I don't dominate her when it comes to leading the house, but as far as in our household, like, and I know she does, so that's why I was like, oh, when she said it, I just, I don't know. I just, I love how you respect me, is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And um, I know for me, like, just just the fact of her um, even just saying, you know what, at the end of the day, I might, they might all think I'm bossy, but I look to you to lead us mm -hmm. like I submit to you because like at the end of the day somebody has to say this is where we're going exactly. and at the end of the day like if we both saying we going this way and that way is opposite then we're not going anywhere because honestly as a woman like I, we as we're we are strong we know how to lead if we're gonna do especially like if we got to do what we got to do to make sure things are done. Like when I was single, like I got to do this. I got to do that. I didn't have a car. Listen, I'm getting on transport, public transportation. I got to get to my job. I got to get to school. I got to do what I got to do, you know, make this money so I can, you know, finish school, pay for my supplies, all of that, like making sure to do what I got to do. But, um, 
Yeah, we be tired and we be like, listen, I'm t- I, I, I need some, I need some help. I need some, you make the decision. I'm tired, you know? <laughs> so, like, really, like, we want help. Yeah. As independent as we try to act, we want some help. Hmm. But if you're not willing to help, then that's when it's like, you know what? I could just do this by myself. Like, I, mm-mm. So. Well, so with that, I have another question then. Mm-hmm. Um, and the question is, so, okay, who... I know that you said as far as me, um, you know, like, at the end of the day, like, you view me as the leader. Like, you know, you're my leader, such and such, and and I and I hear that. Like, in a marriage, who's the one, like, who, is it always about following, I'm trying to see how to word it. Is it it's about. always about following the husband? Yeah, like, because especially when it comes to helping, is it. Is it that your role is as a wife just to is follow. to just follow and help me? I feel like that is so situational mm-hmm. because there are certain instances, especially in our marriage, where you were like, I have no idea what to do right now. Mm-hmm. And it's like, babe, help me. Yeah. You know, help me figure this out. Help me uh, filter through my thoughts, you know, all of that. So I feel like that is, it's very situational. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Um, And I agree. That's a good answer. Yeah. Good answer. Good answer. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So... Uh, let's see. Cause y'all need help too. Man, yeah. Look, yeah, look. <laughs> I know I need help. Uh, because I say it all the time, and I'm sure y'all gonna hear it a whole lot in these podcasts. Um, I thought I had it all together. Like you couldn't tell me I didn't know. Like I had the answers. <laughs> and uh, one thing I quickly found out when I got married is I don't know nothing. So uh, it's literally been a eight year journey. Of every day admitting, I don't know. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. It's more of uh, everything about me, especially when it comes to this marriage and really just life, is I have to trust God because I don't know. I don't have all the answers. Exactly. And as far as even helping me sort through, a lot of times, um, like, because of this thought of I'm the husband or I'm the man, so I'm supposed to have it all together. Like, it's this, it insinuates that I'm supposed to always be strong, that I'm supposed to always um, be so sure, I'm supposed to always be confident. And I know with us especially, that bothered me because I didn't have any, I didn't feel like I would have an opportunity to be vulnerable and say, help, like, I'm, I'm stuck, I'm empty, like, I'm tired, like, I'm tired, help me, like, but... To have that thought that, okay, as a man, that I'm supposed to be the one to, I always got to be the strongest one. Like, what what happens when I am feeling weak and she's feeling strong? Am I supposed to say, no, you still sit in the back because I'm supposed to be the leader? No, nah, like, you can, hey, man, help me. Help? Help me. me. <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, but I, I definitely feel that. Okay, so... Let's see. You want to go there? Yeah, like, it's funny because we can kind of end with that. And this could be like a separate podcast. Okay. Like, so we're going to end with household responsibilities. This is something that comes up a lot, a lot. Yeah. In mar- especially like early marriages. Like, um, you know, it's like, man, I can't wait to get married. Why? Man, shoot, have me a woman that can cook for me, that can clean, you know, that take care of my babies, and I just go outside and I work, and I just work, and come home to a hot meal, and I get my belly rubbed, and my feet rubbed, and my, and my feet rubbed, and she wash my back, and she put lotion on my back because I can't reach it, and I'm just tired, and she just like, mmm, I love you, man. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah um <laughs> but as far as the the i guess the household responsibilities is def hey hey
So for 30 minutes, you didn't want to scratch nothing. <laughs> 30 minutes, you, you uh, for 30 minutes, you didn't want to scratch. Hey, hey. If you're listening to this podcast, our dog Lay down. is sitting underneath our desk. And decides he wants to scratch. And go hammer. And make all this noise. Sound like somebody beating on the table in the lunchroom. Do, 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 do. All right. All right. Anyway. Yeah. We're, we're oh, like household. We were household responsibilities. Um, But yeah, uh, it's just, it's it's funny, like, as I was saying, that that is something that I know I hear a lot, especially from people who are just getting married or even desire to get married, that they... They automatically set up the foundation for this is our house. Like, this is what's going to be happening. I don't do this and my wife is going to do X, Y, Z. And all she's going to do is cook, clean, and have sex. Okay. So, um, household responsibilities. So, I know that some people have this expectation that the wife, she cooks, she cleans, she takes care of the children. Um, and that's her thing. That's what she does. Um, and our household is very balanced. Sometimes, I don't know. Like, it's, it's pretty balanced. Sometimes you do a lot more. <laughs> yep. I'll just admit it. <laughs> Sometimes you do, a, you do a lot more. Um, I don't like doing laundry. I'll just say that straight up. I don't like, um... This is about to be funny. I will throw, I will put the laundry in the, <laughs> I'll put the laundry in the washing machine. I'll put the soap in, all of that. And I'll throw it in the dryer and I'll hang up the clothes that don't need to be dried. But folding, I don't like folding clothes. Never did, never will. I'm sorry. Never will? It's not even like a, a try? I just don't like folding clothes. I mean, I try, you know, I've done it a couple of times. Lord. You know I've done it. Like, you've seen me. You've made me help you. <laughs> so. Is there anything else you don't like doing? Um. I don't, like, I won't say I don't like cleaning up the kitchen because it's not like a, I don't like doing it. It's sometimes I just don't feel like doing it. Hmm. Like, when it gets late or whatever, it's like, I don't feel like it. And then, like, I grew up with a dishwasher and you didn't. So, for the longest, we would have, like, this silent argument about not using <laughs> <laughs> about not using the dishwasher. And I would really want to use a dishwasher, Look, but, man, you know. Because it's two of us. When you grew up with your parents, it was three of y'all. Mm-hmm. And, like, y'all were probably doing a whole bunch of whatever as far as uh, using a lot of plates and cutlery or whatever. But with us, like, we would use paper plates a lot of times or, you know, whatever. So when it came to the dishes, it would be like... Well, you didn't have a dishwasher in your house. So... Hey, because we I'm, we got you in. But we did. Like, like, we did. So... No, we had dishwasher. Not in this latest house your mom got. You didn't have nah, a dishwasher. I know, but we actually grew up with dishwashers. <laughs> just never used it. Yeah, but the <laughs> high school home up until now, she does not have a dishwasher. In the apartments. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, okay. In the apartments we did. When we moved there, we didn't. Yeah, so. Hey, hey man, look. We, so we had a silent disagreement all the time. All right. It, we, this, didn't, we didn't start using the dishwasher consistently until we had Haven, y'all. Yup. Hasn't and, even and, been a year. <laughs> and then I was like, I'm just, I'm like, listen. I've been taking care of this baby all day. I don't feel like washing no dishes. This stuff is going in the dishwasher. Look, so this is why I have an issue with the dishwasher. Not anymore. I've actually, I've evolved. Um, but my issue was I hated that the dishwasher will only, will always become a storage place for all the dishes. Because anytime I go over any of our friends' houses that use dishwashers. The judgment. We Just will, all that judgment. We will always, we'll be like, oh man. Hey, you got any glasses? Yeah, go in the dishwasher. But some people use the dishwasher as a drying rack. So it just stay there? For some people, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I they, That would bother me because I'm like, I can That's never find them. That's their business, a, though. If they want to leave their dishes in but, the dishwasher. See, but the but thing see, is, I grew up with emptying the dishwasher. Like, we had to empty the dishwasher. My parents would make me empty the dishwasher. But the thing is, you may have grew up like that, but if my... Um, my introduction 
into the world of people using their dishwasher. Yeah, he be so like he be so stuck dishes. on stuff like I'm just saying. You no, know, like you be stuck on like if you're introduced to something, you think that that's the way it is. Hey man, and my thing hey, is that's right the not beginning. the way. You better get it right. That's the not the way it is. <laughs> like so, don't like it. Just it. Hey. I have had to debunk so many things for him. I'm like, no, that's not how it is. That's just how this one person did it. Hey, look, man. If if it's white, it's white, all right. <laughs> anyway, I don't, I don't okay, go back so let's go back to the laundry else. thing. Yeah, let's so, go back to laundry. Okay, so who does? Okay, he folds. <laughs> I don't. I don't fold like that. We just let's just be straight up. He folds, and sometimes the laundry will pile up in the laundry it's basket. Not even sometimes the, the laundry, <laughs> the laundry will pile up in the laundry basket. It's clean clothes. It's clean, but it's in the laundry basket. See, and now it's like two big laundry baskets because Haven closed. But see, so. that's the issue. It goes right back to the dishwasher. It ends up just being a whole bunch of clothes <laughs> in laundry baskets. <laughs> And they're just sitting there, and instead of us getting clothes from our drawer, we're going to the laundry basket and we're like, oh, where are my drawers? Dang, I need two socks. Let me find the and socks. And I, I get that. I, I get that, and I understand. So I get, like, the purpose of folding the laundry. But at <laughs> least, at least I'm not like some people. There are some people out there that don't even do laundry. Like, I've seen people who has not done laundry in a year. They just buy new stuff. That's crazy. Like, they'll just be That's like, oh, I'm out of drawers. Let me go buy some drawers, which I think is really nasty because you're supposed to wash your drawers but, before you put it on. But where did, so what are they doing with the drawers that they put on? They throw it in the dirty clothes and then they buy some more. So what's happening to the dirty clothes? It's just more dirty clothes? It keeps clothes? piling up. Like, I follow someone right now on social media. I will never say their name because I ain't going to embarrass you, them. You're going to tell me. I, I will tell you, but... I want um, you to tell me I will, <laughs> No, no, I will not... I, no, I'll tell you off this podcast. But they literally, I think it was like last year, I didn't see them do it last this year, this New Year's, but last New Year's, they were literally like trying to wash all their clothes before the New Year, and it was bags of laundry. You are, are you serious? No, I'm not lying. It was bags of laundry. So, oh my yeah. goodness, are, like, they, are they American? Yes. <laughs> these, are, these American bush, bush boys. Oh yeah. my goodness, they are American. Ah! So at least. We do laundry. Yes, we do laundry once to twice, once to two times, one to two times a week. Yeah, I'm gonna say one to twice. <laughs> we do it like if once it to twice. Does not get um. Yeah, if it doesn't get um, what is it? Whatever. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just, I'm just glad that we. I'm just like I said. At least we we wash our laundry that is out of control at least we wash it hey hey you <laughs> if you are washing your clothes at the end of the year do you know you probably got some mold in your drawers oh my god think about it think about haven stuff if haven stuff but they're for two not weeks, they're not they're, they don't have babies so i know you balling out of control i get it that's crazy. I'm sorry. I'm judging you. Okay. So, um, <laughs> okay. Cooking. What do you think? Like cooking with responsibilities. Okay. So, um, for cooking, I feel like cooking should go to whoever can cook. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Cause I know. I think it's just that simple. I, I know some people, the woman can't cook a lick or she's just not. Inclined. Yeah. She, she don't know how to that's read just, recipes. That's not her annoying thing. Yeah, and the man just cooks better, and he just loves cooking, and he cooks so, and his food good. Yeah. So, hey man, do whatever works in your house. Yeah. I mean, cause I didn't even, I don't even think I answered with the laundry, cause I was stuck on the dude, the person that's uh taking a whole year to wash their clothes. <laughs> like, for us, I just say if you need some clothes, wash the clothes. I don't feel like it's right for me to sit there and wait. And be like, oh well, I don't have no clothes, and Ayana's she ain't do no do laundry. It. So yet. she need to, she need to go wash the clothes. Cause I remember I, I moved the camera over. We, a little bit. <laughs> we um, thank you. We I know we like when we first got married, we tried to like do the roles of 
well, this is what you do. This is what we you tried. do. We tried. We tried. <laughs> and then we was like, man, this is stupid. Man, this, is, this is bull crap. This is stupid. We like, need to do what works for exactly. us. Exactly. Like, all right, babe, so you're going to handle the laundry and I'll handle this and I'll handle... And I'm like... We After really a while, did try. yeah, we really did try. Remember at six twenty eight, six twenty eight, Karen to Rich. So, but now it's like whoever get them baskets, get it from, get your basket from your closet, mine's and Haven's room, and let's get it. And the crazy thing is, for me, that came when <laughs> during that two years. When, well, we didn't even say the time, but those two years um, of me not working, mm-hmm. and during that time, like I was like, I ain't, I'm not about to sit here. At home, Ayana's at work, standing on her feet all day, and she come home and got no clean drawers. No, I'm washing all the clothes. I'm going to fold it. I'm going to rearrange her drawer. I'm going to vacuum. Yeah, <laughs> did he everything. Was, he was a good house husband. I, <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> all right. So, yeah. So, um, as far as who cooks, uh, again, just... Just cook. You need to eat. Yeah. Um, as far as cleaning, who cleans? Um, that's a that's a that not even a fifty fifty. That's whoever. Cause I'm um I'm very anal, so I I I will have random spurts of I need this to. Yes, be. she will. Yeah. <laughs> At two in the morning. You know what? I just want to clean. I'm like, well, okay, well, you're going to clean. Yeah. No, you need to help me. I'm like, no, I'm not no, about to. Sometimes I would be like, I don't need your help. I'm just going to do it because I, you know, and I like stuff a certain way. So, you know, because I like stuff a certain way, I just be like, whatever. And, you know, I'll just be like, well, I just, you know, I, my thing with him is just keep your areas clean. Like keep your desk clean. Keep the side of your uh, bed clean. His closet, I don't even care. I don't even care about the closet. My closet stay clean. No, that's a lie. You lying? No, that closet. My closet stay clean. No, the closet, man, nah, you my lying. Closet, my closet compared to your closet, who closet cleaner? Your at closet's all times. smaller. I don't care. Your closet is smaller. That's why it might come off as cleaner. It, it's, it doesn't but come listen, off. But listen, that off. thing last month was a mess. You're lying. I'm not lying. You were just liar. throwing your shoes in there. Hey. And you had stuff on the floor. Hey. Hey. You must have forgot. We're hey. only a few days into the new year. Roy Jones Jr. Look, I didn't forget. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I know my closet is bigger and it can get a little interesting sometimes. You know, it's not as bad as it used to be when I was in the salon and I would just come home and <laughs> throw stuff on the floor sometimes. But, um, yeah, so like because I'm anal about certain things in the house and how clean it is, mm-hmm. um, so I sometimes I just be like, whatever, you just make sure and handle your little areas, you know. But, but then the cool thing about Sylvester is he knows how I like stuff clean, so I don't have to worry about like, I don't have to go back and clean up after you, like when he cleans the kitchen. It's clean to how that's I like it. That's because I'm a I'm a beast. <laughs> I'm a beast. Cause. Like there are some people that feel like they have to go clean up after their husbands. I'm not doing that. Like I don't have to do that because literally we're like the same person. We are when we clean. We actually are. Like we we like stuff a certain way, and it's we like it the same way. So yeah, yeah. So um, for me, when it comes to the the cleaning, um. I really just say, if it's dirty, clean it. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm like, look, at the end of the day, um, I'm real big on, okay, if she wasn't there, how would I live? That's really my thing. If she was not around, how would I live? If I live with, you know, my closet dirty, whatever, if I live like that, cool. I'll just, then, okay, I got to accept it. But if I wouldn't live like that, I'm not going to sit around and wait and say, well, she's supposed to clean. And that's what I wonder sometimes with like some guys who be like, well, you supposed to do this and they, you supposed do. to do that. They it's what? intentional. What do you mean it's intentional? Like that they they won't clean even though they wanted to be clean. They won't clean because it's supposed to be the woman's job. That's so stupid. They they do it. That is dumb. And that's why some of them single now. True story. Oh, y'all. Oh, y'all, we about to go in on these podcasts. I can't wait for some of these other topics. Because let me tell y'all, y'all men out there crazy. 
That's why a lot of y'all single nowadays. You said single. Single. <laughs> That's why a lot of y'all are single. Cause listen, we know some dudes. Ooh, they requirements for a woman and the girls too. I'm not leaving y'all out. Cause some of y'all are crazy too now. But whew. All right. All right. So we're gonna wrap this up. Cause uh, yeah, we're gonna wrap it up. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we, we definitely have to. We've been talking too long. Yeah. Um, and uh, I hope that you enjoyed it. Because but um, I definitely want to uh, even close with my quote of the day. Okay. Okay. Here's my quote of the day. Are you ready? I can't do it while I talk. My quote of the day is, love is a choice, not an emotion. Choose love. Amen to that. Amen to that. Um, so this podcast has been brought to you by the good folks at ProjectB.co. So uh, <laughs> if you're ready to be extraordinary, you can uh, join ProjectB.co and email WeAreProjectB at gmail.com. And make sure and follow us on social media. I am The Hair Razor. And you are? I am Baca. And also, you can follow us, the Abacas. Yep. And um, you spell it how it sounds. Uh, ba ka. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Definitely, and definitely. We will talk to you in our next podcast. So don't settle for being ordinary when you can be extraordinary. extraordinary.